And for more on the Belt and Road Initiative, we're joined by Wang Pong, Assistant Research Fellow at Fudan University's China Institute. So this is China's biggest diplomatic event of the year. What can we expect and what do you think will be the key takeaway when it's, once it's all over? Well, in my view, this event, this event is not only China's biggest diplomatic event in this year, but you can imagine that currently now the largest economy in the world say no to TPP, to globalization, even to WTO that is left by itself. And now uh, more than two, uh, 28 leaders of the uh, other countries gather together and talk about uh, the future uh, globalization and how to reboot the uh, econ economic engine of the world together uh, in an equal and fair way. So it, I, I think it's a, it's a great party. It's a carnival of world economy. Uh, it will make great contributions to the world economy and the politics. What? Not only for China itself. Sure. And what does the Belt and Road really mean to China and the world? Could it perhaps become a model of diplomacy of sorts? Well, the Belt and Road as China's blueprint and initiative, uh, it uh, reboots the uh, wavering uh, globalization currently now. And what, what, what is the difference? Uh, as the latest version of globalization, it differs from its previous versions of uh, globalization in the past. For example, it treated and united the uh, other countries, both uh, developing and developed together in a more equal and fair way. And uh, it is more maintainable. That's, uh, you see, the, what we have called the Wu Tong, that's uh, in policy, trade, financial infrastructure, and uh, people's mind. We try that the five targets of One Belt and One Road, we try to connect people of all continents uh, in this way, and it's more sustainable and uh, uh, make great contributions to the world. You mentioned all the representatives from all the different countries attending. Uh, we also know that representatives from institutions like the United Nations are attending, and some that aren't even participating in the Belt and Road, but they still are going. So how significant is that, and what does it say? Oh, that's a great question. That UN, in my view, will play the role of participant, coordinator, and advisor for BNR. For example, we say, uh, as far as I know, the UNDP highly appreciate the BNR initiative, and some of its agencies even say they will join the programs or projects of BNR, or, or they will include the BNR into their already established projects. That's first. And second, as coordinator, as uh, we know that in March this year, uh, the UN has made a resolution 2344 about Afghanistan, and it is the first time that mentioned the, uh, the uh, a human being uh, community of the shared future uh, proposed by Xi Jinping president, uh, we, and also praised the One Belt, One Road uh, uh, initiative. And what is more, we know uh, in the long run, China has great energy and uh, it, it is eager to promote the One Belt and One Road. However, it is a brand new project for China as well as the world. Well, by contrast, UNDP and other agencies of the UN, they have much experience, much more experience. So in this uh, process, they may make very useful and helpful advice and help a contribution to the uh, uh, pursuit of one belt and one road. All right, Wang Pong in Beijing, thank you so much for joining us.